Hi, and welcome to Voice with Julia and part two of my vlog on my tongue tie surgery, my phrenectomy, that I'm actually getting next week. So last time I spoke with you guys, it was about a month ago, and I just decided to do the phrenectomy, and I had uh, started myofunctional therapy. And I just want to recap a little bit about why I made the decision to get phrenectomy done and also why I started myofunctional therapy. So as I said before in the video, I have been ha having phantom pain, this like pulling sensation in the right side of my head, neck and shoulders for almost as long as I can remember. And I have a military neck, so the neck has gone straight and I've been you know, remedying that through physical therapy stretches and yoga and things like that. But um, it do, it is related to a forward head posture. Um, and what I've discovered in my search for what's going on with my body is that this can be related to my tongue tie. Um, I don't have a severe tongue tie. I have like stage two or grade two tongue tie. Um, there's It goes up to grade four. So one, two, three, four. So the front of my tongue is pretty free. As you can see, it's not really restricted. But the back, I can't get it up and extend my full mouth without the floor of my mouth coming up. So that is, um, that's a main reason why I looked into this. And I've been having IBS symptoms, which I found out this can be re related to the tongue tie as well. And that I'm not breathing through my nose properly. Um, so I'm swallowing air when I eat or when I sleep and that causes some problems with my digestion. So these are a couple of reasons and I've also had the sensation in my singing that I have a very small margin of error, meaning if my tongue is not in exactly the right spot, things are off. And I do notice in my clients, um, Surprisingly enough, a large percentage of them actually do have some level of tongue tie. Um, so this is not as uncommon as you might think. So if you're watching this video and going, oh, well, I don't have a tongue tie. Well, I would check again, to be honest, like, because, and the way that you can check, it's very simple. You suck your tongue up to the roof of your mouth. And if you cannot fully extend your jaw without the bottom floor of your mouth coming up, so in me, I can get my jaw pretty extended, but you see that that whole bottom part is coming up. So here's my hold, and then I release. I can open quite a bit further than I can keep the tongue up. So that's a simple way to check at home, but of course you always want that confirmed by a professional, but it is, a good first step for you to check and say, okay, maybe do I have this as well? Because it's a lot more common than you might think. Um, but I do notice with my clients that don't have a tongue tie, they do have a larger margin of error, meaning they um, there is a there's a play that can happen, a flexibility in the instrument that it doesn't have to be lined up so precisely for it to work. I mean, technique is technique. You still need it. I'm not saying that. But when you do have a tongue tie, you have to have that much more technique to get you through and to manage all of these different things um, because it can be frustrating. It can be difficult. And I have a couple hypotheses. Of course, I don't know exactly what is going to change. Um, what I'm hoping and what I've heard from the dentist who's actually going to be performing the surgery, she said when she got her tongue tie release, she could feel like all of the fascia that had been holding in her neck, she felt it release. So I'm really hoping something like that happens with me. Um, I would love to look forward to more um, like comfort. Like I do have quite a bit of air swallowing. So that I do sometimes after I eat have a lot of indigestion. So I'm looking forward to maybe that calming down and I'm looking forward to a little bit more flexibility um, and play within my technique. Um, when I say flexibility, I don't mean like coloratura passages. I mean like 
if I'm not feeling 100%, the voice functions still pretty well. And now I feel like that margin of error is just much smaller. Um, so specifically how that manifests for me is if I'm, you know, if I'm singing with my good tongue posture and everything is in alignment, what can happen is if I'm singing for long periods of time, especially in my upper range, so everything's registered much, uh, much higher than it would be normally. As I come down into my low, it can be a, like there is a little bit of tension that is there. And so then when I come down into my low, it feels like it's not quite as full as it could be if there weren't that minuscule amount of tension. And what I think that tension is, this is my hypothesis, we would have to have a really in-depth study with like electrodes attached to all my small muscles and a before and after picture of the muscle like contraction. We're not gonna get that. So unfortunately we are just gonna get my conjecture about the situation. But I do feel that because I keep the tongue up and there is that restriction, that posterior tie. So that's basically tying the tongue down this way. So if I'm stretching up this way, that it puts a little bit of pressure on the hyoid bone. It can, so that can be, then the membrane can get a little bit tightened. So I do think that that has something to do with when I come back down to the low, that it does kind of clunk down there. It like clunks either into chest voice um, and it doesn't go quite so smooth. So it's kind of like an all head voice sound or like clunking into full chest. So I do think that that is something that is going to improve when I get this surgery. Um, and again, I've been doing my myofunctional therapy, which I work with a therapist who gives me exercises to train my tongue. And because I'm an opera singer, obviously I was like, at a much higher level of tongue control than just an average person learning these exercises. But I will say some of them were really hard. We did one that for me was very hard. It was the peanut butter rub. So you like rub the this part like up there on your hard palate, kind of back and forth like you're getting peanut butter off like this. And you want to do that with as little jaw movement as possible. And then another one that was really difficult for me was, this is like also in face yoga, you go like this. So you essentially trace the tongue around and you wanna do that without moving the jaw at all. So those, if you do those for a minute long, okay, you do it once, it's not a big deal, but she has us do them like one, two minutes um, and it can get very tiring. So I definitely felt by the end of, I've had two, three sessions with her now, and at the end of the two weeks for the sessions, I do feel that I have a lot more muscle tone and control. Um, one of the biggest ones we've been working on is the suck and hold, because this is gonna be paramount in my surgery. I'm gonna have to sit there while they go in with a laser and cut my frenulum and then start like moving fascia and cutting in. They might even have to cut muscle. So it's going to be very fun. I'm going to be awake the whole time doing this. Okay. While she's cutting and like moving away. So I have to be able to maintain that hold in 60 second intervals. I, I have to be honest, that one wasn't hard for me from the beginning. Um, although I learned that I was bringing the bottom of my tongue up. So I had to learn to separate this from this. And that's not very good right now, but that's because of the posterior tie. So I will have more access to that stretch. Um, I do feel within myself that I'm at a very good place muscularly for the procedure. I think that <clears throat> I'm going to respond pretty well. Um, of course, I'm like, a little bit nervous about the actual procedure because there's lasers and they're cutting things inside my mouth. But I have a lot of faith in Dr. D who's gonna be performing the procedure in Tampa, Florida. And uh, I will definitely be posting a video post-op. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to get my camera in the actual surgery as much as I wanted to. 
Um, but there is a video of a phrenectomy done by Dr. Zaki on YouTube. And this video is like, it, it's basically going to be the method that is going to be done to my tongue too. So you can go watch it. It's very graphic and it's very scary, but it shows you how they're looking like people who are trained in the Zagi method are looking for maximum tongue functionality. So they're not just going in there and snipping your frenulum. Like that's not what you want. You want someone saying, okay, this person needs access to the full range of motion so that they can fix breathing issues. They can fix, um, you know, postural issues. So the way that they do this procedure is very exact. They're moving away the fascia. They're checking your range of motion as you go, which is why you have to be awake. You have to be able to move. And they're seeing how much more range of motion they can give you. And so if that means cutting the muscle, they will be cutting the muscle. <laughs> but I mean, that'll result in longer healing times. But I'm like, you know what? Do what you gotta do because if that's going to give the result that you need, then go for it. So that's kind of my attitude going into this. Um, but I have noticed over these four weeks, I guess, since I posted the first video doing the myofunctional therapy, I have noticed a difference in my tongue tone and that um, even singing is a bit easier. Like I, I have a little bit more control even. Um, I have to think about it less because it kind of automatically goes there. I wouldn't say with the singing it's drastic. It's a drastic difference. Not not really, but I would say in terms of the actual tone of my tongue, like when I'm doing the exercises that she gives me, the myofunctional therapy exercises, I can really feel that my tongue is gaining in dexterity and in muscle. So that's pretty cool. Um, anyways, so I will keep you posted and let you know how everything turns out post-op, unless I get lucky and I somehow, you know, bring my phone into the surgery and the doctor's cool with it. I'm not sure that's going to happen, but we'll try. All right. Well, until next time, I will see you.